We're coming to you, as always, from the West Coast. But today we are talking about the Sweet East a uh, road trip picaresque across the eastern seaboard and all the many adventures that are in store. Alonzo, tell us about it. The election was a pre-scripted puppet show, mm. just like every year. No, you two are a complete pair of cosmopolitan snobs, you know that. Talia Ryder, uh, who you might remember as the best friend in rarely, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always, uh, plays a high school student who she's uh, is on a field trip to Washington, D.C. with her boorish classmates. And a um, uh, an event happens that is very much uh, uh, related to a real-life event that happened. And she uses it as an excuse to duck out and go off on her own. And she involves herself with a series of people, including um, a... a, uh, a a cell of anarchists, a, uh, a college professor who is also a neo-Nazi, a group of indie filmmakers, um, a, a, a camp for uh, 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 religious fundamentalists who might or might not also be terrorists, um, and just sort of like makes her way through these worlds and along the way borrows ideas and life histories from people and uses them to her advantage as she enters the next world and and you know goes to where she's going um it has a, a an amiably kind of uh, uh shambling quality it feels like the kind of movie that they're making up as they go along although obviously they're not it was written by uh, film critic nick pinkerton um and you know it is a sort of this episodic thing where like this happens and this happens and this happens and some of the episodes are more interesting. Probably the the highlight is the time that she spends with the professor, who's played by Simon Rex. For sure. um, but you also get Iowa Debery as the indie filmmaker and other interesting uh, folks who pop up along the way. This is the first solo directorial effort from Sean Price Williams. He's best known as a cinematographer. He's worked with the Safties and Alex Ross Perry, among others. And this movie is a satire of something i'm not entirely sure what uh, yeah. apart from contemporary life and uh, our contentious age um it, it is it has charm it has laughs i think ty Ryder is is really a, a strong presence throughout it and kind of holds it together in a way that maybe the, the movie wouldn't otherwise but at the end of the day it does kind of feel like a bit of a a bit of a shambly shaggy dog movie that never really finds itself yeah, it's so hit and miss in its episodic structure, right? Yeah. That whole Simon Rex section really could have or should have been its own movie because sure. everything else feels really inferior. And in that section, it feels like it's making whatever point it wants to make the most clearly and persuasively. Sure. Like everything else, as you say, like, what are we saying here? What is this a satire of in terms of American life, you know, in the, in the present day? I feel like that Simon Rex character kind of personifies all of the complexity, all of the misinformation, all of the confusion, and also the, the notion that like you're doing the right thing. He is clearly not, but he's, he's really, really smart, yes. you know? And, and, uh, and so it seems like he is doing the right thing or he hopes he's doing the right thing in his totally misguided activities here. Um, this reminds me totally inadvertently of like a, a very, very low budget poor things. Totally by accident, <laughs> totally coincidentally, because it's a like, journey, <laughs> right? Like Bella Baxter, Talia Ryder's character, who takes on various names throughout the film, um, is on this journey where men try to shape her and influence her every step of the way. And no one's ever really capable of controlling her totally, but she takes what she learns from each place and it like buoys her to the next stop and helps shape her a little bit into who she's ultimately going to be. Along those lines though, what ends up happening to her, where she ends up feels really anticlimactic. Like if I don't know what we're trying to say by where she ends up, like I, there's I, sort I mean, of a futility I, to it. Yeah. I think it's sort of, it's sort of illustrating, well, here's why she went off and th this is what she was running mm -hmm. away from. But, but the character that we've seen is so resilient and resourceful that it, it, it does seem anticlimactic that she just winds up stuck back where she started. And also, is it, a snobbish kind of take on, on like middle class Southern life. A little bit, I think. You know? Yeah, there's a there's a whiff of condescension about it, and it's like it's one thing if you are 
portraying it as like you know when when they're on the field trip you don't know where she's from but you just know that like teenagers and mass are going to be obnoxious and you can see why she'd want to like duck away and you know go off on her own but but then yeah the but but then the 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 whole climactic section just seems a little bit you know it, it seems like a kind of urban you know, sense of looking down like, well, look at these losers, you know. Which is funny because at one point in the, the Jacob Elordi section, did you mention Jacob Elordi? I can't recall I if you did. I did not. I forgot. Right. So he is like the big star in the indie film that Iowa Debery is making. Yes. And he is playing a British actor, like badly playing a Southern <laughs> actor. Is he meant to yeah, be Southern? Southern, like, yeah. It's a bad <laughs> accent that he's doing, whatever it is. And so they're all sitting around, they're drinking and they're smoking at this bar after after the shoot's done. And they're all making fun of like the small town people that they're encountering while shooting on location. And he's like, you realize what total ur urban snobs you sound like, don't you? <laughs> but the film is kind of doing that too. Don't you think? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think it is maybe sort of trying to have its cake and eat it too in that respect. Yeah. Yeah. And like Jacob Elordi, always a very alluring presence. You know, like sure. there are there are glimmers here of what everyone is good at. Io Debri pops always. She's just yes. so likable and so accessible. Um, but in that bar scene, you know, they're drinking real beer. But if they wanted to not drink real beer, they could have <laughs> non-alcoholic beer from our friends at Athletic Brewing Company. They still have some dry January deals going on. We are still in January as we are recording this. So go take a look for those. We have a link for you down below. Our code is breakfast all day. With our deal all the time, you have 10% off of, of all your athletic brewing company orders. You order at least $50 worth of shipping is free. But they've got some really great dry January deals too if you're trying to taper your drinking or stop entirely or just take a little break. And then the Super Bowl is coming, of course, too. So make sure you order in time for that. If you're having a party, maybe you have folks who don't drink. Maybe you just want to actually remember the game and not make an ass out of yourself. <laughs> maybe that's just me. Anyway, athletic brewing company, breakfast all day is our code down below yeah so this is very hit and miss for me but i feel like like alex ross perry movies it's going to have extremely strong favorable feelings and also like what the fuck feelings yeah so. no it will, <laughs> I, I, I could see it being divisive um yeah I, I i i wanted to like it more but i didn't I didn't completely dislike it. And hey, there's a Gibby Haynes, uh, 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 you know, cameo. What more do you want? <laughs> Those of you who are Butthole Surfers fans will be excited to see Gibby Haynes. And like, that's a section two that had some promise, you know? There mm -hmm. are all these little glimmers of things that like might have worked if they had been more developed, but they're all kind of mishmashed together in this road trip movie. Anyway, what's your number? Was it like a 5.8? I, I think there's there's a lot to like here, but it just doesn't quite gel in the way you, you might hope. Yeah, I'll say a five. I'm just right down the middle on it. So The Sweet East, I believe, is in theaters now, correct? Yes, yes. In a fairly limited release, but I'm sure it'll be expanding and then probably hitting streaming in the next couple months. 